Hi everyone, welcome to my NTOP Live. My name is Gabrielle Thalen and I'm on the application engineering team here at Endopology. In today's session, I'm going to show off more techniques to heat exchanger design made possible through Endopology's computational modeling power and field-driven design. So before I jump into the software, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of heat exchangers that we've done in the past, speak to those a little bit, and then I'll jump into an example of um, kind of a different way of modeling heat exchangers through ramping uh, column lattices using field-driven design or also incorporating the math blocks. So before we get to that, um, here's some heat exchangers we've done in the past. I'm sure you're aware of uh, definitely the one on the left. We've produced a lot of content on this one because it's a really cool um, example of the advanced modeling made possible through end topology, but then also being able to offer the interoperability with other tools like ANSYS. So that was a really cool example. Um, but this is the fuel-cooled oil cooler. It is a great example of the application that utilizes gyroid structures. And gyroid structures are really great for heat exchanger design due to the nature of the geometry. They greatly increase the surface area of the geometry and are unique in that they have like two separate fluid donate domains. So this part, um, its performance actually was increased by 312% compared to the traditional design. And because of that gyroid structure, um, the surface part of the surface area of that part actually increased by 146%. So utilizing a structure like this, like over here, we have another heat exchanger, a 10,000 unit cell gyroid here. Um, utilizing structures like this definitely have its perks. And we've done many videos in the past of showing how to um, do this gyroid manipulation, being able to conform to really complex surfaces. But sometimes applying um, a structure like this to a geometry isn't always the best for all applications. Sometimes, like for example, manufacturability is a, um, a consideration that gyroids can, be, can sometimes be a little complicated for depending on what you're trying to apply it to. So to show you exactly what I mean, um, let's actually show an example of where it might not make sense to just throw in a gyroid. Okay, so here we have this, this curvy path here and we do see a gyroid structure. Um, what we're not seeing is there is actually an exterior shell um, that follows this path. So this is just the interior. This is a great example of something that would probably be really difficult to manufacture because the potter removal alone would be probably a nightmare. So instead of applying, like just throwing in a gyroid structure, which we can if we wanted to, as you can see, because we did it, um, let's try a couple different approaches that were much more feasible when it comes to manufacturability. All right, so here we have our curvy path. Um, we're seeing the shell, so this is that shell that I was speaking about. Um, but let's look on the inside of this thing. Notice that we're no longer using the gyroid structure. We're using these columns. Something like this is a lot easier to produce um, and manufacture. And so I can generate, the nice thing about endopology is that we can generate geometry very quickly to a very large scale, but we can also spatially vary it using data. And you'll notice all these columns. Um, in some areas, they're dense, and in other areas, there's less dense. And let's get a different view here to just kind of get better visual on that. Let's look up. And you can kind of see that varying density. Um, I was actually able to vary this using like an example temperature field. So that's one form of data that we can use. But we can use practically anything to vary, spatially vary parameters of our structure. Everything has a field, and we can use it as like kind of like a modifier to varied beam thickness, uh, density, variedly hollow things. So this is just one example of a bunch of different things we can do with field-driven design. And so let me show you that temperature field. Um, so I'll just kind of uh, show you the field of that. Here, let's pop it open. Turn on the heat map. And there's our temperature field. So we're saying like with these in these hot spots, which I just kind of put in some values here, let's have a, a column spacing of five millimeters. And in like the cooler spots, let's space out the columns. So we have all these knobs we can turn to create a part that's really tailored to um, using the utilizing the data we're bringing in and tailored to the application. Um, so this is a really cool example of field-driven design. Um, Another cool example, a different approach, was, okay, we can generate these columns very quickly, but let's try 
importing like a CAD fin. So I imported this part here called fin. You can show that, this random fin here. And I was actually able to pattern it along this tube and using math blocks, able to use the gradients of the sides here of the tube to orient the fin so that as it's moving along this path, it's following the curvature of the pipe. So this math tab up here, which can be sometimes kind of daunting to new users, is extremely powerful when we start understanding how we can utilize fields. So I'll just kind of pop this thing open. And you'll, if you want, you can, if you have a trial of NTOP, you can download the file and take a closer look at it. But you see we are utilizing like a cross pot product. We're evaluating the field gradient. So basically I took this path sides. So here's one side, here's the other side. And I'm using those as guides and basically fi finding the gradient of those and generating a bunch of points on a surface where I then pattern my fin. And then by fi finding the cross product of those, those gradients of each of the sides, I can orient the fin so that it follows the path. So using math, we can, or the computational modeling power of NTOP, we can do some really cool things with, um, with our geometry that's not possible in other tools. So those are a couple additional techniques. I think they, you can see how they make more sense for like um, manufacturability. There's that gyroid that we saw before is very, it was very dense and compact. Powder, as I mentioned, even like the powder removal would be extremely challenging. Where this, we have something that we can actually generate, uh, manufacture, and then also if you think about the powder removal, for something like this, opposed to the gyroid, it's much more feasible here. Okay, so those were a couple more techniques to add to your repertoire for heat exchanger design. Um, again, incorporating field-driven design, some math blocks, and just some more latticing capabilities. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please continue watching these, always putting out more content, new content, and I thank you all for your time.